Teaching and learning in Duval County, it's an expensive endeavor and a critical one. What do you think about paying more in taxes to increase pay? The school board chairman joins us today explaining the proposal headed for city council this week. Plus, political analyst Rick Mullaney turns his eye to the latest on the JEA scandal. Years after a potential sale of the public utility and a controversial bonus plan, two former members of the C-suite turned themselves in to face federal charges. Stay with us for This Week in Jacksonville. And we're going to touch on topics that are local, state, national, even international today. Right now, we're looking at education and the costs in Jacksonville. Joining us today by Zoom, Duval County School Board Chair Daryl Willey. Uh, Chairman, the board voted March 1st on a proposal for a referendum to raise property taxes. It passed it six to one by the board. Why does the school district need this additional income? Uh, honestly, it's about creating a competitive advantage for our, our teachers and our schools. Like we are looking at an opportunity uh, to be able to increase teacher salaries. Uh, right now we have about 466 vacancies within our schools. So that means we do not have a, a, a high quality teacher in front of every single student. We can do better. And we truly believe this is a lever with this one mil tax increase that we're going to push to the voters. They get to decide uh, to increase teacher salaries so we can stay competitive with all the surrounding counties around the state. Because right now we're we're seventh out of the big seven school districts as far as average teacher salary. And we can do better. We can do better than that. Uh, Chairman, I want to show a, a graphic here that, that explains the proposal from DCPS. It's a millage rate increase, so a one mil increase. The district explained uh, when they voted on this, the owner of a home worth $225,000 with a homestead exemption would pay $17 more per month or about $200 more per year. That money would go toward operational costs, including salaries, arts equipment, and athletics programs. Does that explain it? Does that encapsulate why you think that uh, this millage increase is important? It does. We have to talk about where, where we've been. In the past 10 years, the millage rate has been decreased year over year over year. Um, back in 2010, the millage rate was around 5.3, and now it's around 3.5. So with each and every year that we roll off, we have not been able to see the increase in funds to take care of the growth, the inflation that we've seen within our schools. And that's why we've seen sort of a flat sort of uh, level of where our salaries are. But right now we're competing. Our teachers are going all over uh, other counties. Corporations are starting to recruit our teachers because they know they have the skills and the skill sets, the problem solving, the, the ability to relay knowledge. So we're competing with corporations, other schools, and this salary is a, is a part of us being able to, to be competitively advantaged, uh, have that competitive advantage. I, I reached out to the district office here and uh, this, I want to show you the proposed timeline for the referendum. It's posted on a yeah. referendum website. I'll give you more info on in a minute, but March 1st, school board of Duval County passed the resolution and place it on the ballot. March 16th, that's coming up this week, legislation filed with the city council to carry out administrative duties. April 26th, by then, the city council would consider the resolution and place it on the ballot. And uh, June 24th, final ballot language would be submitted to the supervisor of elections. Then August 23rd is when voters could decide whether to uh, approve during the primary election. Now, this is a proposed timeline. There are some things that are factors there. Um, there are. And I think I would ask you about that. City council is where this has to go. Is that something that you expect to just go right through or does city council have a, an ability to not let that move forward? Yeah, the, the city council's role in, in this is really to pick, figure out the date. So they're so supposed to support us with the date. That's clear uh, with our legal counsel, their legal counsel. They, they understand that. So we should. I'm hoping that we'll see a very clear path to that August election. And that's important that we do it and put it in that August election because this will be motivation for even up this upcoming school when it comes to recruitment and retention. Uh, you think about an experienced teacher right now who's getting going into the summer and they're deciding whether or not to stay or go. This could be that lever, that additional $5,000 or so that that individual teacher could get could be the difference between them staying and going. So that's why we have a, a sense of urgency around getting this on the ballot in that August uh, time frame. So the city council has already shown some pushback and I want everybody to see, you probably saw this, but last week city councilman Rory Diamond was on our show and told us this last week. Yep. I think we have a chance to vote no. I think the city council can say, no, we're not doing this right now. The reason why is we share credit 
meaning the school board and the city council are judged by the same bondholders at the same time. If they raise a mill, it affects the rest of the city. And frankly, the school board has not made the case for doing this. So part of that pushback that I'm hearing is, hey, there are other taxes that have been passed. Clearly, there's this half cent sales tax that was passed to benefit the school district, but not in this area of advancing salaries to make them competitive, right? Yeah, very different. So the half penny sales tax, which we once again, the, the way that we operate, we always push to the voters. We push to the voters for the half penny sales tax. It passed um, with overwhelming numbers because we, you could see the age of our schools and, and where our schools were going. So we're excited about that half penny can only be used for those uh, capital dollars. So the building of buildings, the renovations of buildings, the hardening of the safety in our buildings. This this one mill is for teachers. It's honoring our, our educators who have been on the front lines during COVID and even before COVID, and they deserve a competitive wage. And we want to be able to do that. So that that the difference between those two is really important. And we as a constitutional body have the right to, to do this. We understand that we've been great fiscal stewards of the dollars that we have been given. And this is one of the only ways that the schools can increase their budget is to go to the taxpayers. Companies go and raise prices. We have to go to the taxpayers to get the quality education that we want in our schools. And we're doing that. Uh, you look at the last five or six years, we've increased graduation rates. You have some of the, the most, uh, the highest uh, scholarship rates that our students are getting. We're seeing the improvements, uh, wonderful superintendent that we have. So now this is an opportunity for us to honor the experienced educators in our, in our buildings uh, by giving them a competitive salary amongst all the state. I don't know that anyone would uh, argue with the fact that teachers deserve to be compensated uh, for what they do. It's an important role. And Chairman Gary Willie, thank you so much for your time today. So the Anytime. school district has a website about the referendum, and here's what it looks like for you. Uh, you're going to see the timeline I just showed you, the ballot language. You're also going to see a frequently asked questions section. This is at duvalschools.org slash vote. All right, so we're turning to the JEA investigation and analysis from Rick Mullaney. For the first time, people have been charged with a crime. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. Get the Planet Fitness Black Card, our most popular membership for zero enrollment and only $22.99 a month. With access to 2,000 plus locations, bring a friend every time you visit. I love friends. And relaxing massage chairs. Mm, that makes me so happy. The PF Black Card is your ticket to all the perks. Look at that glow. Oh, it's all natural. It's this place, I tell you. So get glowing and feel fitacular for zero enrollment and only $22.99 a month. Deal ends Wednesday, March 16th. I grew up working in my family's supper clubs. This is where it started with us as far as the fish that we serve at Culver's today. We source the finest cod and batter each filet by hand and always cook it to order. That beautiful golden brown color and flaky on the inside. The fish fry is a Midwest tradition. It's about families coming together. I love bringing this tradition to guests everywhere. Mom and dad would be proud. Welcome to delicious. All the products you love in as little as two hours. Publix delivered, powered by Instacart. America, home of the free. Hi, welcome. Kitty free, right? Yeah, that's right. Free is our favorite word. Like kids eat free. We get it. That's why at Morgan and Morgan, our fee is free. That means you don't pay anything. This place is fire. <laughs> unless we win your case. All right, cool. Injured? Call Morgan & Morgan, forthepeople.com. Are you tired of suffering from missing or broken teeth? Frustrated with dentures that just don't fit? Get your smile back today at Argyle Dental Center. With an on-site lab, our dentures are affordable and reliable. And some can even be done in a single day. That's right, just one day. By using state-of-the-art technology and materials, these aren't your grandparents' dentures anymore. 
Call us today for a consultation to see how Argyle Dental Center can help you get your smile back. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. Rick Mullaney is the founder and director of Jacksonville University's Public Policy Institute and our News for Jack's political analyst. So, Rick, you just listened to that interview we did with the school board chairman. Give me your view, your analysis of another potential tax increase or extension in the city of Jacksonville. Well, Kent, the chairman is compelling on this is worthy. Teacher salaries, it's worthy. However, I think this is a much tougher sell than the half-cent sales tax for several reasons. One is the people of Jacksonville and throughout this country are really struggling with inflation. Go to the gas pump and look at the gas over $4 a gallon, look at housing prices, look at food. It's really, really tough. Second, as you just mentioned, this is in the, against the backdrop context of tax increases in Duval County. Uh, one is the half cent sales tax for the school district where I thought the superintendent did a great job and the community rallying around that. Another is a six cent gas tax that was passed, an extension uh, of the Better Jacksonville Plan tax. It's really a pension reform tax by the mayor's office. All of those against I mean, the backdrop for tax increases. And remember this too, rising housing values yeah. mean there's going to be a tax increase on your property tax next year without this. So when you look at this, I think this is a much tougher sell than the half cent, which is raising $1.9 billion over the next several years for the district. So this will be compelling case, compelling message, worthy cause, I think a little much harder sell. Will this fly with voters? Maybe more importantly, will this even get to voters since it has to go through city council? And we just heard Councilman Diamond from last week's show saying, I don't know if we're even going to move it on. I believe this is going to go to the voters and it will be there in August. I do agree with the chairman of the school board. This is really more of a ministerial task. If you look at the statute, the statute says the resolution gets passed by the district and under the statute, the city council is to put it on the ballot and they can decide the dates. But the council, I believe, will put this on the ballot. You may see a council member or two, for various reasons, vote against. But really, this isn't about the substance. The city council vote is not whether they're in favor or against. They're simply putting it on the ballot, and I believe it will be on the ballot. You know, our, our friends at the UNF Public Opinion Research Lab, they recently did a poll about the most important issues in the city of Jacksonville, and taxation was not at the top of the list. Does that mean this is no big deal? I don't know if that's really the case, right? I think that poll may have been misread by some. It certainly that poll was significant and it showed a shift in the thinking here in Duval County because it wasn't that long ago you couldn't have increased any taxes here because of the backlash. But we have certainly seen, as we've mentioned before, that uh, Mayor Curry, for example, did an extension when he on pension reform. You've seen this the gas tax with the JTA in the mayor's office. You also saw the half cent sales tax for the district. So there has been public investment for the future in a significant way but there comes a point especially with inflation and the challenges that the community is facing that I think that this one's gonna be a little tougher we've got a little bit more in the uh, term of mayor Lenny Curry will the legacy of Lenny Curry as mayor be increased taxes and I ask that just because it it, it you, what you just laid out over the last several years and it seems unusual and maybe even unwanted for a conservative politician. I don't think that'll be his legacy necessarily. Uh, his pension reform really wasn't a tax increase, it was a tax extension. When the Better Jacksonville plan expires, the pension reform half cent will go into effect, so it really wasn't an increase. And the other two taxes really weren't the city proper. One was for the school district and I think you saw the community and the mayor rally around that one. The other is a billion dollar investment in infrastructure on the gas tax. So although you've had those investments, I don't necessarily think that that's going to be the legacy for the mayor. So Rick, let's stay local, but let's turn from taxes to JEA, Jacksonville's public utility company. And in some ways this goes back to 2017. That's when Aaron Zahn joined the volunteer board of directors. Eventually I uh, became the CEO, had discussions about privatizing or selling JEA. There was this confusing but extravagant bonus plan and then eventually he was dismissed with cause. This past week, a 30-page grand jury indictment was unsealed with conspiracy and wire fraud charges against Zahn and the former CFO, Ryan Wanamaker. So, Rick, you called this historic at the time. You called for an investigation into the so-called PUP or PUP. Does this seem like this is just a long time coming and finally there are charges? It's clearly been a long time coming and if you read the indictments, they're very compelling, they're very serious and they certainly do outline what we have talked about as perhaps the greatest scandal in the history of the city financial, the greatest scheme to defraud the city ever. It clearly is in that category. The allegations, Kent, are very significant. And there's a couple smoking guns uh, in those allegations in the indictment. One is that in the spring of 2019, the CEO, Mr. Zahn, and the CFO, Mr. Wanamaker, 
actually did a spreadsheet. There's a document. They calculated what the bonus would be. And they calculated that bonus on a net of just $4 billion after the sale. And that bonus would have been, get ready, $345 million. However, the net was going to be far above that. We actually know from the public records that the biggest bid was $11 billion. The net might have been over $6 billion. And at that level, Kent, hold on to your seat. Yeah. The bonus would have been approaching a $1 billion. A great scheme to defraud, breathtaking, stunning, arrogant, hard to believe that this was going forward. And but for the work of some very good people at City Hall and beyond, media and otherwise, it would have. But these indictments were serious, and you saw two, the CFO and the CEO get indicted this past week. Your, your entire career is an attorney and, and started as a prosecutor. So put the, with those lenses, are there other people who probably should be charged, or could be at least, because they, were, they had already signed up to participate in this bonus plan? Well, Kent, one thing I would say is that the indictments themselves were fairly narrow. They were li limited to the PUP. They were limited to the bonus plan, and they were limited to these two people, the CEO and the CFO. And so I wouldn't get ahead of myself. Certainly, a lot of people in the community were wondering, was there bid ricking going on? Were there other improprieties in this sale? Were other people involved? You certainly didn't get that, that speculation. You can't go beyond the indictments. The indictments are very targeted right. and fairly narrow. Uh, let's just wrap up on this topic at least. Uh, hey, so somebody out there is saying, well, why is this important? Because no one ever actually got those millions or that billion dollars. Why is it important to prosecute and hold people accountable for something like this? That accountability is really important, and the breadth of this scheme is stunning. If you read the allegations in the indictment, it was intentional, it was willful, it was a scheme to defraud literally hundreds of millions of dollars from the taxpayers. That's number one. Number two, the fact that they didn't get the money is simply because some very good people, such as the council auditor, such yeah. as city council, such as the media, such as the civic council, came forward with a bit of courage and were able to stop it from happening. I believe the U.S. Attorney's Office has done the right thing in going forward. The mere fact that people didn't profit from it, it doesn't change the fact that that scheme to defraud is a crime. Yeah. All right, Rick, thank you for that. So uh, stay with us. Lots happening in Florida politics recently, and that includes overtime for the legislative session in Florida. We're going to dive into that when we come back on This Week in Jacksonville. A different atmosphere, a different environment. For over 75 years, Bears Furniture has brought comfort and style into millions of homes. Come see the difference, like savings of 43 to 60 percent. And for a limited time, save 10 percent on the new Palm Desert Collection from Tommy Bahama. You'll find a stunning gallery of leather sofas, chairs, and sectionals. Like this gorgeous Italian leather sofa in stock at only $21.48. Experience the difference at Bears. It's the weekend, and we know accidents can happen anytime. That's why we're here for you 24-7. Don't wait until Monday. Call Farrah and Farrah. Your eyes, beautiful on the outside, but if you have diabetes, there can be some not-so-pretty stuff going on inside. It's true. With diabetic retinopathy, excess sugar can damage blood vessels, causing vision loss or even blindness. So remember this. Now is the time to get your eyes checked. Eye care is important to your long-term diabetes management. See a path forward with actions and treatments from a retina specialist that may help protect against vision loss. Visit NowIC.com and take charge of your sight. to experience all the feelings inspired by Lexus at the Invitation to Lexus sales event. When smoking gives you COPD, you learn to lie a little bit. You make up excuses like, I have to get my keys. You guys go on anything so you can walk at your own pace. I used to do that all the time. Those lies don't work anymore. My tip is... The worst lies are the lies you tell yourself, like smoking isn't that dangerous. Tobacco-Free Florida offers free nicotine patches to help start your quit journey. 1-877-YOU-CAN-NOW. When cleaning your air ducts, it's important to clean the entire system. And air duct cleaning from Stanley Steamer removes pounds of trapped dirt, dust, and allergens from your home completely. The cleaning improves your home's indoor air quality, keeps your home cleaner longer, 
and can even improve the efficiency of your HVAC system. We want you to have the cleanest and healthiest indoor air possible. So call for a free inspection today. Harold Harold's been in this community for decades. Knowing what we're doing makes a big difference in us being able to resolve cases for clients. That can be negotiating, cooperating, communicating with the other side to seek the best results for our clients. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. With Rick Mullaney, our News for Jackson political analyst. So there is a proposed budget for the state of Florida, so the legislative session should end tomorrow with votes in the House and Senate. Throughout the 90-day session, thousands of bills die. Some make it all the way through the process. And Rick, one of the most controversial items that passed along party lines, the abortion bill, which mirrors some legislation that we're seeing in other parts of the country. What do you see in this particular bill? It does mirror some other legislation. For example, Mississippi. This legis the 15 week ban on abortions after 15 weeks really is being taken from what's happened in Mississippi, and that's by, not by accident because the Mississippi case has gone to the U.S. Supreme Court. So, what will happen with this bill is they'll, when it gets signed and when it goes through, it'll be effective July 1, and it, it tracks that case. Now, make no mistake, 15 weeks as under the law today is unconstitutional. That's at odds with Roe versus Way. That, uh, Ro, Roe versus Wade, and that's at odds with uh, uh, case, the Casey case. Uh, and so right now it's 24 weeks. This summer in June, however, there will be a Supreme Court opinion, and that Supreme Court opinion is being widely watched. It could very, over, it could very well overturn Roe and Casey, or it could modify it. In either of those cases, you could see the 15 weeks become constitutional because currently it is not. But in Florida, there's another layer. Even if the Supreme Court acts that way, remember, there's the Florida Constitution. And the Florida Constitution has a right to privacy. It's one of the amendments to the Florida Constitution that could provide an independent basis for choice. So keep an eye on this one, Kent. Um, the legislation's passed. It's going to go through. Its legality depends on what happens in June and you could expect it to be litigated if the Supreme Court does either overturn or mm. modify Roe. And so those are just a, a few months, just a, a handful of months in front of us. How about a little farther down the line? This is going to be an issue in November, and this is going to be part of the midterm elections, even uh, an election we certainly would see it, I think, coming up in the run for governor in Florida and possibly Georgia as well. Kent Roe versus Wade was passed. It was The opinion was issued about a half century ago. If this June there is a, that is overturned, that will be a political earthquake, and the midterms will be in November, and it will be a big part of those, of those midterms. If, in fact, and I'm not convinced they are going to overturn, but many people believe they are. Another possibility is that they will simply modify it, and they would, the 15 weeks in Mississippi and in Florida under federal constitutional law would be upheld. In that case, it's still a big issue, but not quite the same as if it's overturned. So there's a lot at stake here. Republicans are looking to November very favorably. They think they have the inside track, and they do, to regain control of the House and Senate. However, there's a lot can happen between now and then, and this is one of them. That opinion in June is something to keep an eye what on. What a hot-button topic uh, to have be part of the conversation going into midterm elections and uh, electing or re-electing a governor in your state and that kind of thing. All right, so uh, Rick's with us. We've been talking. We wanted to get into this a little bit. We've all been watching what's going on in Ukraine. Uh, beyond the daily reports of airstrikes or shots fired, you know, you've told me Russian President Vladimir Putin has done something that was unexpected, maybe even unprecedented, right? Um, I think President Putin has done something that maybe nobody else could have, which was he's united the United States. You saw in the State of the Union Republicans and Democrats in agreement at the State of the Union. You've seen bipartisan support for the ban on Russian oil. And you even see the media. CNN and Fox certainly in agreement on the brutality that we're witnessing and hard to comprehend what we're seeing. So he has united the country. He has also united NATO in a way that he may not have anticipated. In fact, he's brought about the very thing he feared, which is NATO united, Na NATO deploying troops, NATO deploying armaments within those NATO countries. So I do think here that Putin did something that maybe no one else could, which is unite the country unite NATO, and he did it in a way that he didn't anticipate. Uh, m many people may realize, maybe don't, this is the second time Putin's been president in Russia, and he wants a legacy, it sure seems. What's that legacy? It's, it seems like that legacy is changing in these very moments. There's just no doubt, Kent. Let me say this about President Putin. I think he's miscalculated in several ways, and they're serious miscalculations. First, he miscalculated on the people of Ukraine and President Zelensky. They are more courageous. They are fighting back harder. 
They have been extraordinary, and I don't think he quite anticipated what it would be like in Ukraine. Second, as I mentioned earlier, I think he, misrep he miscalculated NATO and the United States and, the uni and how unified everyone would be, would be, as well as the sanctions. But third, and this goes to the legacy, I think he's miscalculated the long-term consequences of what he has done. In the end, Russia right, has oil and gas, and they've got nuclear weapons, and not no much, a little bit of wheat thrown in there, but they really don't have much else. This, in the long run, will be devastating. And even because they're not performing well, what they're going to do is what they've done historically, is they're going to level Ukraine. And I don't know if he thinks that's a victory. It is not. And the people of the Ukraine will fight him for years in insurgency. He may think, and I think he's right about this, I think he may have thought that Ukraine was his legacy, and he's right. I think it is his legacy, but not the legacy that he was envisioning. The world sees him very clearly for who he is. They see the dictatorship. They see the brutality. They're seeing it on television. I think it's a colossal misjudgment by Putin. Sorry to squeeze you on this. 30 seconds or less. Sanctions take time, but will the severity of the sanctions on Russia make a difference here? They do make a difference in many ways, but they're not going to change. Unfortunately, they're not going to change what we're going to witness in the next few weeks and months, and that is that the Russian forces and the power and the leveling of the Ukraine. It's not going to stop that. In the long run, I believe it has some consequences. It's significant. It's important. We need to follow up on it. But if anyone thinks it's going to deter Russia from doing what Putin wants to do right now, I don't think that's the case. Mm -hmm. But that is, uh, that's the course that we're on right now. Rick, I appreciate it. We talked about a lot here. Always great to get your insights uh, from your vast experience here in, in local uh, policymaking. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so stay with us uh, constantly on News 4 Jax. You can find on the This Week in Jacksonville section previous episodes. And next time, we're looking at a $40 million issue concerning social workers. Family Support Services of North Florida's president will be with us to talk about those things. This Week in Jacksonville airs each Sunday morning at this time. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching on air on Channel 4 and the CW17 and online at newsforjax.com or streaming on News 4 Jax+. Plus. See why every day more people are choosing News 4 Jax, Northeast Florida, and South Georgia's number one source for local news.